let us move on to the next topic how can i generate ideas right so this is linked closely to the word creativity that we use often so we will uh, look at this issue of creativity in some detail so here are some quotations the quotation is shown below imagination is more important than knowledge who made this statement einstein einstein so this is uh, again pointing towards creativity imagination is creativity reason can answer questions but imagination has to ask them in research it is very important to ask good questions right it is not sufficient to solve problems which others have framed it is important to ask good questions this is also a part of creativity let us look at difference between intelligence and creativity now here when you use words like intelligence and creativity of course they depend on your definition now somebody may say i include creativity in intelligence right then what i am discussing will not apply so i am using uh, words as they are understood by many okay and as they have been used even by uh, people who have done research in psychology in early days so here uh, are two examples one person merilyn was savant scored an intelligent quotient of 228 highest ever on a particular intelligence test see there are very many intelligent tests so a particular test was applied to many people to see right what kind of results it throws up and uh, what achievements the people have made okay so they have got intelligence scores iq scores for a large number of people by using the test and they have also tried to study what these people have done in their life what was their professional achievement and so on so this person merilyn was savant those scored 1228 on the iq test person was merely a question and answer columnist for parade max this was the professional achievement is the person on the other hand richard feynman scored only 122 on the same test <coughs> which is less than many run of the mill physicists but he is a nobel prize winner and recognized as the last american genius so this is trying to point out that creativity and intelligence are not the same okay so we need to understand intelligence and creativity each of these two terms properly intelligence and creativity are not the same things intelligence in a domain means the ability to function at a high level in the domain but creativity involves asking new questions and altering the domain this is the difference let us read this again intelligence in a domain means the ability to function at a high level in that domain so what does it mean it means let us say we are teaching various courses to students and then we are setting questions based on whatever we have uh, done in the class sometimes the question can be difficult also and then you assign grade point average to students based on this particular system of evaluation in a rough way we can say we are testing intelligence whoever gets high marks right is a person who is functioning at a high level in that domain in the particular subject okay this is the meaning of functioning at a high level in that domain ability to function at a high level but creativity involves asking new questions and altering the domain what would creativity mean creativity would imply if a student has asked some question and as a result of pursuing answer to that question that subject itself has got changed or a new area has got added to the subject then that is an act of creativity okay so research involves creativity if you see people who have made impact they have changed the world that is what is the meaning they have they have changed the world so you alter the situation as a result of your thinking process so if you solve problems efficiently solve a large number of problems given by others efficiently you may not alter the situation you may not alter the area though you are able to function at a high domain and such people are definitely required there is no doubt about it but we are trying to here understand the difference between intelligence and creativity one can be highly intelligent but rigid non creative or lacking in the kind of single minded passion that drives creators now let us define creativity much more clearly so one definition of creativity as given in psychology this has been uh, 
the statements arrived at after doing some research. It is the ability to look at the same thing as everyone else and think something different. So this is one definition of creativity. It is the ability to look at the same thing as everyone else and think something different. Another definition. It is the ability to take a fresh look at familiar objects and situations enriched by past experience but not constrained by it. So whenever you try to look at a situation or a problem, definitely you will make attempts to solve it based on your past, what you have been taught and so on. So you cannot avoid it. But you should not be limited by it. That is the important thing. So you may use that as a starting point but you will not end there. That is the meaning of this. So, ability to take a fresh look at familiar objects and situations enriched by past experience but not constrained by it. Now, let us illustrate these definitions with examples. Let us take creativity in expression. See, creativity is there in different areas, right? Creativity is not restricted to only mathematics or science. It is in literature. It is in day-to-day -day life. The important thing to understand if you want to be creative is that it is there in day-to-day -day life. You have to have a taste for it and note this creativity. And if you do that, then creativity will develop in you also. So here are some expressions of creativity. Supposing person wants to express warmth. So this is a statement made by one of the uh, American diplomats who was in India. Okay? When he was leaving this place after many years. So he said, during his... Uh, Farewell speech. During the coming winter, our vivid memories of India will warm us as we face the snows. He comes from a place which is very cold. Okay, so this is one way of expressing warmth. So you see, if you see the words here, all these words are very familiar. There is no bombastic language. It is a way you connect the various things together. Humor. Often humor is an example of creativity. So there, is, uh, there was some person who did a lot of research on capitalism and communism. So then people asked him, so what is the gist? of what you have learned after all your research. So he said, this is what I learned. Capitalism is the exploitation of man by man. Communi communism is exactly its opposite. So what is the opposite of exploitation of man by man? It is exploitation of man by man. So it, in his research, at least, he felt ultimately there is no difference. I mean, whether you agree with this or not is a different question, but this is his conclusion. The way the conclusion is put is important. This creativity. Disgust. This is one example. <coughs> uh, last century, there was a lot of uh, discussion among philosophers on matter and mind. Are the two different or are they same and so on. So one student of philosophy, uh, he summed up after he went through different courses and he was asked, so what do you feel at the end of all this, you know, education in philosophy? He said, what is mind does not matter and what is matter never mind, right? That is the feeling I get after all listening to all these debates. It's so confusing, okay? So it's just, it's just so disgusting. Here is another example of uh, creative peace. I am trying to give you day-to-day -day examples. I am not trying to give you a very high examples of, uh, you know, height in creativity in, lit uh, in literature and so on. With a specific reason to uh, tell you that creativity exists in day-to-day -day life. And this is what we need to see if you want to develop creativity in you. Okay? And you should appreciate creativity in various things. That will help you to do good research in your own area. So someone uses, uh, used only two words, roses and thorns, to distinguish between several attitudes in life. Optimistic, roses. Life is full of roses. Pessimistic, life is full of thorns. Realistic, life is both roses and thorns. Stoic, how does it matter? Roses or thorns? You mean, roses for you and roses for me. So uh, let good things happen to you and to me. Selfish, roses for me and thorns for you. All the good things for me and the bad things for you. Sadistic, thorns for you and your blood for me. <laughs> then love, roses for you and your smile for me. And finally divine, roses for you and your thorns for me. Okay? Now you can see, he has just used two words, roses and thorns. All of us have seen roses and thorns. Right? But this person has thought differently. It is the ability to see the same thing as everyone else, but think something different. But he thought that you can use these two words and 
you know, distinguish between the various attitudes in life. Another definition of creativity uh, in a context of science and engineering is a creative product is a new and useful combination. It is a new and useful. So usefulness is a very important part of creativity. This we should understand as researchers. So for example, uh, random tapping of a piano by a monkey, it generates a new pattern which is not necessarily melodious and so cannot be regarded as creative. So you should not think randomly doing something and somehow getting something new is creativity. That is not what creativity is. Okay, that may be one component of creativity that you know you are trying to see various combinations and alternatives. But all combinations are not necessarily creative. This is very, very important. Usefulness is a very important criteria. So this is important in the context of judging someone else's research or your own research. So research is new, fine, but is it useful? Only then it is creative. So creativity in Indian classical music, uh, you know, you understand what is uh, the a creativity element in classical music. What is the difference between uh, someone singing a song which has already been sung nicely and, and singing a raga, right, in classical music. So a person who sings raga in classical music is a creative person. Why? Because he is using the same notes as prescribed for singing that raga. But the combination of the notes can be different. And they, some combination of notes can be more melodious than other combination. The notes may be the same but their combination. Okay? That is the creativity. So that is why people say classical music is creative. Whereas uh, light music where you sing someone else's song. Mohammed Rafi has some song song and you are singing it. Right? That doesn't involve creativity. You may sing it well, you may sing it melodiously. Right? So definitely you have a talent but that is not creative talent. So for example, a music composer is a creative person. Though the singer himself may not be a creative person to that extent. So creativity can exist in social relationships, even in planning one's life, apart from art and science. So in fact, this is one interesting uh, example that I want to quote. In our department, once there was a student. His uh, name was uh, Ma Shivayana. Ma Shivayana, this was the name. Now, uh, <coughs> people used to wonder, what is the meaning of this name? Because they have no never come across this name. So we asked the student, uh, so what is the meaning of your uh, name? So he said, sir, the story is like this. My father is a very ardent uh, devotee of Shiva. And he got a dream after marriage that he will have exactly five sons. And he wanted to name all the five sons after the name of Shiva. So he struck upon this particular approach of naming his sons. So he took the word na ma shiva ya. You know, it has five letters if you go by the Indian uh, method of writing. Na ma shiva ya. And then he named all his sons by simply, you know, you draw this, uh, you, uh, you write these five letters in a circular fashion and then you generate five names out of it. So the first son was named Nama Shivaya. The second son, you start with Ma first and end with Na. So it becomes Ma Shivayana. So this fellow was the second son. The third one, Nama Shi, you start with Shi. So Shivaya Nama. That was the third son. And the fourth fellow is Vaya Nama Shi. Because you start with Va and then end with Shi. And the final fellow. <laughs> okay? So Nama Shiva Ya. Ya Nama Shiva. Right? The fifth son was here, named Ya Nama Shiva. So this is how he named all his five sons. And his belief was that whenever he utters the name repeatedly, he will always be saying Nama Shiva. If you repeatedly utter this, you will get the this thing, chanting of Nama Shiva. So whatever it is, the point is, there is creativity in many things. It is depends on us whether we can see it. In fact, I asked the student, what is your uh, father? So he said, my father is a poor farmer. That is what he was. Right? So creativity um, can be there in anyone. You know, it can be there in anyone. It is just that. So what is important, as we have said, some strong drive, motivation should be there. In this case, a strong devotion, feeling of devotion is the motivation. So some strong drive should be there, something that drives you very strongly to do something. This drive is the basic uh, element for creativity. So let us look at the creative process. People have studied uh, 
how ideas generate or how ideas are generated. So you must have uh, come across this statement, ideas strike by chance but only to a prepared mind. This is a very profound statement, ideas strike by chance. So definitely there is an element of chance, you cannot predict when the idea will strike and what idea will strike you. But it strikes only to a prepared mind. Okay? So there is an element of uncertainty and certainty. Certainty is that unless your mind is prepared, it is sure that you will not get ideas. We will see shortly what is the meaning of preparing the mind. So now let us look at the stages. So normally, uh, studies have shown uh, that there are broadly four stages in which an idea is generated. So first stage is called preparation. When you try to understand the problem, the situation and so on. And understand the components of the problem. Then you start thinking about it. Then comes incubation. So incubation is a period where subconsciously you are thinking about the problem even when you are doing other things. So it is like background music. Okay? You are maybe doing several activities but in the back what is playing is the problem and its components. Then comes a time when there is illumination. Illumination is a time when you think, I think I got the solution. That feeling when it comes, right? I think I got the solution or aha feeling. It is also called the aha feeling. Now, when you get illumination, an intuition strikes you and which says that you have got the solution. But the detailed solution is not yet in your mind. But you feel that you have got the solution. I think I have the solution, right? So that is why there is a final stage which is also important and that is the exposition. So in this period of exposition, what you do is you set out to write the solution in full detail in all the steps, logically connecting all aspects. So uh, preparation, incubation, illumination and exposition. The important thing is this incubation. Unless you give a period of incubation, ideas will not strike you. So one has to concentrate on a problem for some time or for a sufficient amount of time and then one should just leave the problem to work in your mind in the background. So many times people have got ideas after a nice sleep for example. Okay? So in their dream people say that they have got ideas in a dream. People have said they have got ideas after they have got, they have uh, uh, had a very nice meal. So it has been found that by and large ideas strike after or during a period of relaxation, after intense concentration. Okay, by and large, I, by and large. I mean they have studied for example great musicians, great scientists and so on and asked them at what point did the idea strike you. So they strike during a period of relaxation, after intense concentration. So when you are concentrating, you may not get the solution. Please understand this. But without concentration, you will not get a solution. But during the period of concentration, you may not get it. So you should concentrate, right? But And you should not get frustrated. You know that things have not happened. And then leave it. And then it will keep working in your mind. And then during relaxation, when you are relaxed, suddenly the idea will strike you. Okay? So this gives you some hint on how you should uh, work in your research. Let us look at requirements for creativity. So it doesn't need very high intelligence. Uh, above average intelligence is sufficient. Example, Charles Darwin, the great scientist, was virtually enumerate. So you should not think that you should be very highly proficient in mathematics to be creative. This is not necessary. Strong motivation. This we have emphasized several times, right? The strong motivation is very, very important. So something should be there which uh, you may call it an irrational desire, you need not, which you need not explain, right? Which you need not explain. If somebody is asked, why do you have a strong feeling of devotion, right? You cannot explain it. it, it is there. You may explain it in some different ways, but it is only a way of rationalization. It is just there in you. Then hard work, discipline, organization, and then open and flexible mind. So this open and flexible mind, what does it mean? Let us see in some detail. So according to psychologists, they have given uh, definitions for each of these 
things which you know we use often so what is the idea in defining this to make things at least as precise as possible so that a word is not used too vaguely so open mind a psychologist says is receptive to alternate points of view regardless of the present level of commitment to a belief this is the meaning of an open mind it is receptive to alternate points of view regardless of the present level of commitment to a belief so you may believe in something very strongly some approach but that doesn't preclude you from listening to people talking about other methods of doing things another definition an open mind acknowledges areas of common ground with those who hold alternate beliefs and allows dialogue with someone with opposing views without attacking the proponent of those views so there is a statement a quote nothing dies faster than a new idea in a closed mind okay so when ideas are being generated whether the ideas will actually result in something whether they will flower and develop into something useful and new it all depends on whether your mind is open or not now what is a flexible mind a flexible mind is capable of leaping sideways upwards and downwards around a problem before reaching a solution so this again has to do with exploring alternatives so when a problem when you are faced with a problem you should explore several alternate methods of approaching the problem in our research also we should not get stuck with one approach right so you have a problem try to first at least arrive at different possible methods which may give you the solution and then you pursue a particular approach up to some point and see if it gives you solution doesn't give then you go to the next approach but right in the beginning think of different ways of doing the same thing and only then take up a particular method and approach uh, and uh, pursue that so what are the characteristics of an open and flexible mind some more points it has keen observation it has a wide information base this is very very important when you say a wide information base it means you have to read a lot okay cannot be restricted to your own area a habit of analyzing other creative works so what is the meaning of this supposing you are interested in music then what are you doing you know there are several different composers who compose music so you look at one composer see how he or she composes another different composer then try to compare this person uses these instruments in composition that person uses this kind of an instrument this person uses singers in high octave whereas that person uses the uh, bass quality of the voice this is what is meant by comparison of the creative works so you can do a similar thing in your own area people <clears throat> may be proposing several new devices try to see advantages and disadvantages of various devices okay people may be proposing various techniques supposing you are doing simulation people nowadays do lot of simulation there may be several ways of simulating the same thing one may use monte carlo technique of simulation one may use finite difference method of simulation so many times people are not aware of the different methods they simply are uh, they know that some tool is available in, in which uh, on which a senior has worked you use the same tool right that is what people do this is what is meant by saying that you must be aware of various approaches okay but you may pursue one approach that doesn't matter right but you must be aware of different approaches and finally ability to criticize and judge the worth of one's own ideas it is supposed to be an important characteristic of an open and flexible mind 